Hey, how's it going? And welcome to the channel and the start of a series of guides inspired by my Master Assassin build. This is the first of the alchemy guides and shows you how to make all those pretty little flowers and butterflies make you more efficient at slaughtering everything you come across in Tamriel. But be aware, this is a detailed guide for gamers that want to play the game as intended, so no cheats or exploits here. Okay, let's crack on. Oh yeah, just before we start, I just want to thank YouTuber Nitro Crate for the inspiration and helping me with many of these potions. I'll leave the link to his channel in the description alongside many, many links to super helpful Skyrim alchemy sites. Okay, crack on now, I promise. Now, most players simply use alchemy to make a quick bit of gold. Uh, or enhance their smithing and enchanting, but there's so much more to it than that. And in this series of videos, we look at the mechanics of alchemy, some commonly used and also rare potions and an assassin built around alchemy, and hopefully answer the question, is alchemy worth it? As you adventure around the wilds of Skyrim, you'll notice there's an abundance of flowers and ingredients to pick up along the roadside, in caves and off your enemies, all of which can be used in alchemy. Now, alchemy in Skyrim is the means to mix various ingredients to make potions and poisons that help you in all your endeavors, whether you be a warrior, a mage, a thief, or an assassin. In this guide, we'll be looking at the mechanics and essentials in alchemy. But if you're looking for the more rare and deadly potions, don't worry, there'll be a separate video dedicated just to them. And as the mod is open to all, I'll even include some rare Curios potions as well. I will be leaving links in the video description of several really, really useful sites to look at. These cover every aspect of alchemy, so make sure you check them out. But before we dive right in, there's a few things that should be mentioned. There are quite a few things that directly and indirectly affect alchemy in Skyrim. First, potions and poisons can only be mixed on an alchemy lab, which are commonly found in certain areas uh, such as cities and some towns, in places like apothecaries, some inns, in the court mage's quarter, as well as coming with or more likely as an upgrade you can purchase with a player home. It's worth noting that you'll find them in some camps and barrows as you quest around Skyrim. Now there are certain mods that give you portable alchemy or portable player homes such as the Staff of Shalador or the Haven Bag, and check out the videos on those guys, they're great. Uh, that get around this restriction, but for the purposes of this video, we'll be sticking to the standard lab. So let's take a look at the mechanics of alchemy. Now when it comes to ingredients, nearly everything is plant-based and grows in certain areas around Skyrim. So if you harvest the same area over and over, you'll run into Skyrim respawn mechanics. This means that once you pick a plant, it will not respawn until you left the area for 10 complete days. And just to be clear, that's 10 in-game days. Dungeon and Barrows are slightly different. The 10 day rule still applies if you don't clear the dungeon, for example, you don't kill the boss, but if you do clear them, then the plants need not 10 days, but 30 days to respawn. So unless you want to use the wait feature, it's advisable to find multiple locations to harvest. Merchants and apothecaries run on the usual 48 hours to restock, so you can quite easily just wait the 48 hours for them to respawn. Just a quick tip here, all of the apothecaries have a little side quest. If you do this quest, and I strongly suggest you do, many of the ingredients in that shop will become free for you to take. Just be careful as some will still be marked as stealing. With Hearthfire, you get a small outside garden, usually with around 10 growing spots. But if you wish, you can build a greenhouse that offers you far grow greater growing capability. You can grow pretty much all the plant-based ingredients. And even better, it only takes three in-game days for the plants to grow. Now you have to, you have to leave your home for those three days. The initial growth, I think, is one day. The green thumb perk becomes particularly useful when growing your own plants. Sadly, the rare curios ingredients can't be grown, so still have to be purchased from Khajiit Caravans, which is incredibly time consuming and expensive, but in some cases can be worth it for sure. 
So with that being said, let's take a look at the perks in the Alchemy skill tree in a little bit more detail. The Alchemy uh, perk is a straightforward linear progression where at level 0, potions and poisons you make a 20% stronger. Level 20, 40% stronger. Level 40, 60% stronger. Level 60, 80% stronger. And finally, at level 80, potions and poisons you make are twice as strong. Next up is the Physician perk, which you can get at level 20. Potions you mix that restore health, magicka or stamina are 25% more powerful. Benefactor, which you can get at level 30. Potions you mix with beneficial effects have an additional 25% greater magnitude, and this includes potions such as Fortify Smithing and Fortify Enchanting, etc. And next up at level 30 is a Poisoner. Poisons you mix are 25% more effective. At level 60 you can go for Concentrated Poison. And poisons applied to weapons last for twice as many hits. Next up at level 50 is Experimenter. Eating ingredient reveals its first two effects. At level 70 eating an ingredient reveals its first three effects. And level 90, eating an ingredient reveals all its effects. Then we have a green thumb at level 70, where two ingredients are gathered from plants, essential if you're going to roleplay as an alchemist. At level 80, you have a snake blood, which gives you 50% resistance to all poisons. And at level 100, and finally, is purity where all negative effects are removed from created potions and all positive effects are removed from created poisons. Well, what perks should you get? My recommendations on alchemy perks will come in two parts. If you're not role playing as an alchemist or someone who uses poisons overly much, then take the five alchemy perks plus the physician and benefactor perks. This will serve you well for your health, stamina and magic potions, as well as enhancing your smithing and enchanting, etc. Now, if you want to go full tilt into alchemy as a major part of your build, as I have, then you want the aforementioned perks, plus poisoner, concentrated poison, green thumbs, or the collecting of extra ingredients. The three not mentioned are optional. Snake blood is completely useless, but if you want purity, you have to have it. And Experimenter is definitely worth it to learn all the effects and ingredient offers. Now, it's worth noting the Experimenter perk allows you to discover the more effects each time you ingredient. So once you've done all the ingredients, the 1.9 patch and the Dragonborn add-on both have features that let you clear a perk tree and reinvest those perks in other places um, through the black book and by going legendary. So you can get as many perks as you want in, a, in an experimenter, eat one of each ingredient and then you can go legendary which will clear the alchemy tree and you can put those three perks elsewhere. Then just power level your alchemy again, put in the perks where you wish. Now this is important, before you go legendary, make sure you've enchanted the best alchemy gear you can so your power levelling will go faster, and we'll touch on the alchemy gear later on. Purity is a difficult one. If you're a dedicated alchemist like my character Taren, then you'll want this perk so you don't have any negative effects in your potions, which is obviously a sensible thing to do. However, some of these impurities actually add a value to your potions, which in my mind is insanely odd, but if you need gold, I suggest making your impure potions and selling them to you as much gold as you need, and then take the purity perk. Now let's take a look at alchemy gear. This should be one of the first things you do in game. Find or buy anything with a fortify alchemy enchantment on it. If you're going to buy it and have a choice with something that has, uh, say, a 5% alchemy enhancement for 100 gold and something that offers 20% enhancement for 1000 gold, always take the cheapest option. 
as they are both offer the same when disenchanted. Anyway, once you've got something with the Fortify Alchemy on it, disenchant it at an enchantment table. The four pieces of gear that can be enchanted are gloves or braces, a ring, an amulet or necklace, and any headgear such as a hat, hood or helmet, etc. Make sure you get quite a few of each bit of gear, say five or six hats, five or six gloves, five or six rings, blah, 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 blah. Maybe even more if you can. So let's make the Fortify Alchemy gear. Before you start, there's a few things I'd strongly suggest you do and have ready. Put a perk into Alchemist at level zero, and if possible, try and leave a perk or two spare before you do this. Activate the Thief Stone. Sleep in your own bed or in, at an inn's bed just before you start. Make sure you've got as many Grand Soul Gems as possible, and you'll want as many of the following ingredients as you can get your hands on for making Fortify enchanting potions. That's blue butterfly wings, and note you get two wings per butterfly. This means you're going to be chasing butterflies around Skyrim, but good locations are Bloated Man's Grotto in Falkreath Hold, all right around Whiterun Hold, including Whiterun itself, and around Rorikstead. And you're going to want snowberries. You'll find stacks of these outside Windhelm, Dawnstar, and Winterhold, and pretty much anywhere you'll find snow. Now, each time you level up, don't forget to put a perk into Alchemist and make a new set of gear. In between making your Fortify Alchemy gear, you'll want potions to level up, and the recipes and ingredients I suggest are the following. Firstly, Dragon's, Dragon's Tongue, Fly Amanita, Mora Tapinella. Second, Butterfly Wing and Tundra Cotton. Thirdly, Frost Miriam, Purple Mountain Flower and Wheat. Fourth and finally will be Blue Mountain Flower, Hanging Moss and Lavender. Now I'd suggest uh, these as the ingredients are really common and found around White Run Hold and Solitude. Hanging Moss is generally found around the cities and in the, especially in the catacombs. Now of course if you've got ingredients for other potions then use them if you wish. So the first thing to do is enchant all your first set of gear. Now if you did have a spare perk put that into Alchemist then make a Fortify Enchanting Potion. Once you've done that, make a brand new full set of Fortify Alchemy gear. Now start making the potions I mentioned above. Each time you level up, put a perk into Alchemist and then make a new set of gear, as obviously the higher the enchantment, the more expensive the potions you'll make and the quicker you level up. So don't forget to get the Alchemist perks as they become available and this is then just a rinse and repeat operation. But now you see the value of the Thief Stone and sleeping in uh, your own bed or an inn's bed. So now you've done all that and you're ready to be an alchemist. So let's take a look at identifying ingredients effects. You can try various recipes found in game or you can simply mix ingredients together randomly. A more effective strategy is to notice commonalities between ingredients. Those that grow near each other often have similar effects, such as purple mountain flower, thistle, lavender, red mountain flower and tundra cotton. Insects that feed on flowers often have the same effects. Sim similarities between names such as frost and snow also provide a hint. Placement of ingredients in kitchens and display shelves usually indicate they combine with nearby ingredients. But to truly delve into alchemy, you'll want to max out the experimenter perk so you can discover all the effects each time you eat an ingredient. If all this seems a bit much for you, I have included several incredibly handy links in the video description, including an excellent resource called Skyrim Alchemy Recipes Finder, which also includes a fantastic tutorial so you can get the most out of this tool. I really, really strongly suggest you check it out. Okay, before we start with what I consider are the essential potions, there's one last thing to cover, and that is ingredient combinations with negative effects. When combining ingredients, remember, the ingredients have four different effects, so it is possible to create a potion that gives you an effect that you want, but at the same time, affect you in a way that you don't want. 
For example, combining lunar moths and chorus eggs will not only create an invisibility potion, but they will also create a damage magicka effect, which damages your maximum magicka. Now, this doesn't matter if you're playing as a warrior or a thief, but it will matter if you're playing as a mage. Another example would be if making a restore magicka potion, don't combine red mountain flower, grass pod, or white cap, as this will also produce a ravage magicka effect, which greatly reduces your maximum magicka, completely the opposite of what you're after. These conflict ingredient effects are found in nearly all potions, so keep that in mind when you're making your potions, that all your potions will work uh, as your character wishes, such as reduce magicka won't be an issue to a hammer wielding orc, but reduce stamina would. This is why the purity perk is such a boon, even though it's not necessary. Okay, we'll start off with one we've already used, but I'll just put it in there because it's absolutely essential to any player, and that's a potion of enchanting. Now use any two of the following ingredients Ancestor Moth Wing, Blue Butterfly Wing, Chorus Hunter Antennae, Hargraven Claw, Snowberries, Spawn Ash, or Sprig and Sap, and this will greatly affect uh, your enchanting. I'd always suggest Blue Butterfly Wing and Snowberries as they're incredibly common. Next up is a potion used by absolutely every single player, well, nearly every single player, I guess, and that's the potion of smithing. Use any two of the following. Blisterwort, Glowing Mushroom, Sabercat Tooth, and Sprig and Sap. Uh, I'd always suggest Blisterwort and Glowing Mushroom, as they're fairly common. And next up, we got the potion of bartering. Any two of the following, Butterfly Wings, Dragon's Tongue, Hargraven Claw, and Tundra Cotton. Tundra Cotton and probably Butterfly Wings are the most common. Now, getting good prices for all the stuff you make or pick up in your wanderings around Skyrim and are especially essential when you're a low-level character. So take one of these potions, but don't forget to activate the Shrine or Zenithar and give a beggar a coin, and maybe enchant some fortified barter gear. I also can't strongly enough recommend getting the Merchant's Perk in the Speech Tree. I did a video on this a while ago. Seriously, check it out. You'll thank me for sure. And next up, we got the potion of cure diseases. Any two of the following: Charred Skeever Hide, Felsard Turn Feathers, Hawk Feathers, Mud Crab Chitin, and Vampire Dust. Now, the effects of this are cured diseases is an effect that cures all your diseases. Uh, the effect will also cure Sanguinar Vampiris, but only within the first three days after infection. Garnet Bread, by the way, does exactly the same thing. Now, because it doesn't have a magnitude, simply eating something like hawk feathers is as effective as creating a potion. Next up is a multi-effect potion, and that is the Cure All potion. Incredibly handy, this one. Now, this requires all the ingredients. Blue Mountain Flower, Charred Skeever Hide, and Mug Crab Chitin. And the effects are it cures diseases, it resists poison, it restores health, and restores stamina and all the ingredients are fairly easy to get. Now remember, your cure potions don't all need to have one single effect. This is particularly potent at removing multiple ail ailments with just a single swig of a potion. And now we have the Restore Health Potion. This is probably the most important uh, potion that you'll carry. Now use any two of the following. Ash Hopper Jelly, Blister Warts, Blue Dart Wing, Blue Mountain Flower, Butterfly Wing, Charred Skeever Hide, Daedra Heart, Eye of Sabre Cat, Felsard Turn Feathers, Imstall, Rock Warbler Egg, Swamp Fungal Pod, or Wheat. I would suggest using the more common ingredients, say Blue Mountain Flower, Butterfly Wings, Swamp Fungal Pods, and uh, or Wheat. Now the health repairs uh, the player's damaged health. Restore health would not increase health past its base value but this potion is absolutely essential. And up next is another multi-effect potion I call the Health Related Potion. Now this potion is fantastic, but sadly one of the ingredients is quite rare and expensive to buy. Now you need all these ingredients, Blue Mountain Flower, Giant's Toe, Impstall, and the Giant's Toe is the fly in the soup here. It's quite hard to find and very expensive to buy. And the effects are quite good, they're fortify your health for 300 seconds and they restore your health. 
One of the po first potions you're likely to craft is one related to quickly restoring your health. This one is particularly potent and incredibly helpful in combat situations. And up next is another basic potion, and that's the Restore Stamina Potion. Now, any two of the following, Purple Mountain Flowers, Mud Crab Chitin, Torch Bug Thorax, and Orange Dunkwing. Now, your Restore Stamina is an effect that refills the player's stamina. It can be used to replenish stamina lost by sprinting or power attacks, or to repair damage caused by a damage of stamina effect. Uh, restore stamina will not increase stamina past its base value then. and the penultimate potion for this particular video is a restore magicka video particularly useful for any of you guys playing as mages or using magic as a major part of your uh, playthrough now any two of the following red mountain flower white cap mora tapinella spiky grass and creep cluster any two of those and the Restore Magicka is an effect that refills the player's Magicka. It can be used to replenish Magicka lost by casting spells or to repair damage caused by a Magicka, a damage Magicka effect. Restore Magicka will not increase Magicka past its base value. Uh, a potion, and really bear this in mind guys, a potion made from white caps and red mountain flowers actually ravages your Magicka instead of restoring it. And we go back to the conflicting effects of certain ingredients so bear that in mind and last but not least well for this video anyway is resist magic and they use any of the two following nern roots bleeding crown lavender or tundra cotton now all of these are fairly easy to find the resist magic effect gives you a percentage reduction in the damage inflicted by offensive spells for example if you have a 50 percent resist magic uh, uh, with neither resistance and are hit by a spell dealing 30 points of magical damage, you'll only receive half the points of damage, 15 to the 30. Um, and it also re reduces the duration of the paralyzed spell. Now, oddly enough, many players don't make use of this potion for, for some weird reason. Me personally, I always buff my resistance to magicka uh, by doing stuff like the Book of Love quests and carrying these potions, as I get tired of being killed by any random necromancer I happen to chance upon. Anyway, it's up to you. I think it's an essential potion. And that's it. You're now an alchemist. Well, nearly. Uh, the following videos will show you uh, how much you can actually do with this particular skill. So make sure you check them out. One last thing I'd like to add before I go is to make sure you pick up every ingredient you come across, whether it be uh, in a city, in a dungeon, in a barrel or along the road, off an enemy, whatever and find a safe space to store them even if you're not going to use them and do this even if you don't think it's likely you'll be using these ingredients and do the quest for the apothecary owners and don't forget to check out the links in the description below these will give you all the information on alchemy you'll ever need well i think that's just about it all i can say is an alchemist based build is an incredibly interesting way to play the game give it a go Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and even more importantly found it useful. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. Hope you enjoyed it guys. See you later. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment and please do subscribe. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then push the bell next to the subscribe button after you subscribe, obviously. Later.